Hello and welcome to the Moonscape Podcast. I am Matt Moody, joined by DJ Mitchell, here to discuss the Thursday, April 4th NHL Daily Fantasy Slate. DJ, I gotta say, these openings I've had pretty ingrained in my mind for years now. I almost completely blanked during that opening, so I'm not sure what that means for this show. Um, it might it might be a doozy, it might be just a sucker, who knows. Um, but how you doing on this fine at once the evening? Yeah, I, I honestly, I feel like super scatterbrained too today. I don't know what the hell is going on. I just felt like all day, like this really all week, I just felt like super all over the map. So that, and that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, things are fine. I don't know. Just churning out the same stuff over and over again, uh, expecting different results. Uh, another horrific DFS late on Tuesday and um, everyone fought on Wednesday. So that, that's cool. Yeah, um, I think in in you know in coordinates with with the Rangers Devils games, we should just get into a fist fight on air. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But you, what a what a weird weird slate so far. Um, All right, yes, yeah, precisely. I so. yeah. Let's just get into it. Let's get into everything. Let's rip it up. Yeah, no, let's so rip up this whole Tuesday, slate. Tuesday. Um, I, I lost. I thought I was going to win, maybe, and then I didn't. Um, so that was pretty disappointing. Olin Zellweger was a lot of fun. Um, so let's see. It's Anaheim on the slate. They're not. We don't talk about Olin Zellweger. But I got uh, a lot of engagement for a tweet for me. You know, I'm not DJ. I don't have people just liking every tweet I post. So if I get, like, three tweets or three likes, I'm pretty happy. And then I got more than that. But I... I Spent the 45 minutes to figure out how to clip a ESPN Plus video. Um, but that that kid's absolutely incredible. So I'm um, really excited about him to close out the year. Uh, otherwise, I did manage to uh, scratch out a W in our head-to-head to stay alive in MSP Madness. Um, and the last thing before I introduce day three of MSP Madness is that I just wanted to call out uh, Nawada for winning like all the contests on the slate uh, with a Montreal one calgary buffalo stack um if you weren't paying attention to my newsletter that is the exact lineup i played in scottsdale like you know not the same players but the same concept of you know like montreal one plus goalie uh buffalo one plus calgary like you know just just absolute rubbing salt in the wound that i do not have two hundred fifty thousand dollars in my bank account when he puts up like 206 points and wins just all the money just just sickening shit um but yeah really high scoring slate yesterday on a slate that didn't really feel that enticing um but buffalo you know uh, i think brought an end to both of our nights pretty early so uh anything else you want to say before i go over the contest that you are now no longer part of msp madness yeah i, I mean i would have walked you regardless but i played two lineups and one was like pretty good and one was absolutely abhorrent um and it started great. Like I had the first goal of the night. I'm like, oh man, I might have to cook. And then nothing happened in my main lineup. And my other lineup, I it, it still would have lost. I think it had like yeah 101. I don't know what you finished with, but I think you had like 120, right? What'd you have? I don't even know. Uh, not quite. I, I had 106. Yeah, yeah you were. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, uh, share. Yeah, I think I would be killed off by like a couple of points. <laughs> Yep, just to uh, quickly preview the MSP Madness that we have on the docket here. Um, so you can see day one and day two on the YouTube. Um, I, you know, I posted that in the Discord, so if you're in it, you know. Um, but just to quickly go over day three, because we only had 12 signups, we kind of had to figure out a way to not give people buys yet, like, uh, you know, randomly give people buys yet, get it down to it even number to do a final four basically um so we eliminated the t- the three zero and two teams dj is one of them uh clary 24 is one and mike berg uh you know so so my two co-hosts are two of the eliminated uh people so maybe next year we'll get some of these two and oh folks on the pod um to really spew some of that knowledge for us that leaves us with nine players remaining and four spots to dilly out. So the, the three 2-0 and o teams, uh, Jason F. Uh, making his uh, lineup from the pool. <laughs> um, so that, that was very funny uh, that he just absolutely puts up the nuts uh, just with a poolside lineup. Mac D-Man, 
uh, Mr. Educational in the Discord. And Hunter Forever will be playing a three-man. The top two will advance to the semis as they are 2-0. and oh, They get preferential treatment here. And the loser of that three-man will get $20 paid back to them because technically it's a double elimination tournament. That guy's really only getting a single elimination. So at least take your money back, and that's part of the payout. Uh, group two, the losers of the 1-0 games. So they are 1-1. One one. They will play a three-man, and the winner will advance to the semis. Guy Guy, 26-26. Smack 817 and Wookie Moth Mouth Moth. I'm actually not sure how to say his name, uh, but Moth 19 on DK. And then finally, uh, the crushers like me who beat the losers uh, in day two, you know, so so the winner of this three men will also advance to the semis. And that is me, MN Matt, and Woo Wee. I like Kitties and Nolt 0032. So um, yeah, real, real fun day three ahead of us. And we will keep track of that in the discord as well um and that will just about do it for our msp madness introduction to the slate let's get into the games so uh how do, we do you want to do, do the this? read do i can the do read. the read so all right let's see let's pull up the read as you know this podcast is brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook. You know, you're on DraftKings probably for if you listen to this podcast. Um, get your friends to sign up for the DraftKings Sportsbook if you can. We know hockey games move fast, but with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you can score faster than anything happening on the ice. This week, new customers can bet five bucks, get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Uh, we will go through all of the games on the slate. Um, I snap bet a Nashville uh, money line last slate. Did not get there, um, but we got was it nine points of closing line value? So you know, hey, uh, so so there's there's a win for you in theoretical dollars. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code THPN. New customers about just five bucks in the NHL and get two hundred instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook code THPN. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler or visit www1800 Gambler.net. In New York, call 878 Hope NY or text Hope NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help to build from problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ctpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino Run Resort in Kansas, 21 plus, eight verse by jurisdiction, Boyd, Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. NHL, the NHL Shield. Our registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. All right. Um, let's get into this. Where do we start? We, am I muted? No, I'm not. Okay. We start Boston, no, Carolina. Boston on the road, five and a half, minus 115. Carolina, minus 148 money line right now. Seems a touch excessive, but I mean, Bruins. Kind of a little bit stinky. Definitely feels like an under. Um, but yeah, five and a half. I don't know. I'm not really going to go there. All that being said, uh, also not that interested in this for DFS purposes. I went on a bit of a Boston could be in play because, you know, the top line actually is uh, good now. And then they immediately got away from that. Um, they went Heinen, Zaka, Pasternak, the only line that scored at five on five. And of course, they had a shorthanded goal. So cool. Uh, Coil, Marchand, and DeBrusque. So garbage, nonsense, stupidity. Playing against Carolina, they're going to be 0%, but I'm not going to do it. Any thoughts on Boston before we talk about the Hurricanes? I mean, Pasternak, I don't know. He's... Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, just, just looking around, like McKinnon gets Minnesota. <laughs> um, that, that's not a very fun matchup. Uh, I mean, Florida, we'll talk about them, but they're super banged up. Tampa's on a back-to-back. So, like, there's not a lot of high-end options on this slate. So, I, I think Pasternak is worthy of inclusion in the mix because you can easily play him with, you know, L.A. against San Jose or the Islanders against Columbus. It's it's not super hard to fit in uh, Pasta if you want him, and he'll clearly be low-owned, and we know that he can go for 25 against anyone, including uh, the world-beating Nashville Predators, who, I mean, that game was a uh, rock fight. Like, uh, you know, I don't think Nashville was really good offensively, but defensively, it was 
an absolute master class. And guess what? Posternock still goes absolutely nuts because that's Posternock for you. Um, so I think that makes sense. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I can't see myself clicking on anyone else on Boston, even a guy like, you know, Zaka, who should be attached at the hip. It, it's a tough sell to stack um, into like a three point bonus or anything like that. So, yeah, uh, on the other side, Carolina is basically very boring and not fun outside of the Ajo Jarvis Gensel line. It's the majority of their offense, power play one correlated, but. It's a five and a half, and it's it's expensive. I mean, Ajo seventy seven, Gensel seventy nine, and Jarvis is all the way up there at sixty three hundred now. I just don't think I'm clicking on it. Uh, I know they've exploded for back to back pretty big games. Jarvis has been absolutely world beating, but I mean, I think you're. I, I'm not doing it. I think it's. Uh, yeah, it's too expensive for me. Like you probably missed it at this point, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look elsewhere. Yeah. Um, trying to see if I don't know if there's a better. I don't like this layout anymore <laughs> uh, because it's like blocking most of the the prices here. Anyway, um, Carolina's yeah, like they're moderately interesting. Mm. It's just like now they're really expensive. Um, yeah, I think this layout works. Thank you for figuring that out. Um. Like their lines suck, it, like Svechnikov on like the third line, but that's really, you know, it's a pretty thin thin play. But he's gotten shots bonuses in two of his last four, which isn't nothing. So I could see him going for like a ceiling game, but that's really not. Um, yeah, there's not a ton here that I like other than like the occasional one off, and I don't think that'll surprise many people given the, the total in this game. So anything else? Um, no. Nah. I'd say I crossed that one out myself completely. Next game, Islanders at Columbus Blue Jackets, minus 185 for the road. Islanders, six over under, minus 115 on that over. Um, again, I mean, it's it's kind of ugly. Uh, I also, I guess, will mention, you know, I mean, I, we don't know if we're getting Boo Jenner or not, but, I mean, just feel absolutely terrible seeing that news today that, um, you know, it, it's, you know, I guess personal, but also they did tweet about it. But, yeah, his uh, – son or daughter i was born stillborn that was hor horrible to read so hopefully you know all the best to them and i just don't know if it'll be in tomorrow or not but that was awful yeah i i did not see that so that is uh yeah that's that's yeah. horrible it's, um, it's kind of it's super weird yeah. to like say because it's like oh it's hard to like be like oh we don't know if we've been tomorrow and not say anything but yeah i mean keep an eye on it i guess i'm not sure columbus is all that enticing as a team but I, mean, I feel like there's some options here on, on this team that should be looked into um so we can work off the guidance of i don't really know i mean he didn't play last game so we could just go off of last game and say he probably doesn't play again and that gave you know the cylinder Texier marchenko line quite a bit yeah, of fun um the power play correlation doesn't really come together there but you know you have that and then veron Kof, Nylander, Gaudreau. So working off the assumption that that's what they're going to stick with, it's just really cheap all around. I mean, there's, I mean, uh, Wierenski 7K, and you might want to include that in a stack with the way he's playing right now, but you know what I mean? It, it, I think there's at least something here. Yeah, they they rely heavily upon Texi and Cylinder defensively. So like Marchenko being top line, you know, uh, top power play, and then in the top six, which, you know, again, defensively, if they're leading, that's that's two guys they'll rely on he's playing with them it's not like they have a bunch of great options otherwise i could see marchenko working his way uh into the mix here um i don't know cole sillinger at 3400 feels like a good play i he was really expensive well you know just i mean not that long ago right um so maybe that's an area that yeah. we can um yeah as i navigate around here it's just a little yeah, whatever. Um, I mean, he was up to 50, was yeah, he was up to fifty six hundred in January. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, okay. I, that's so crazy. That is... That's crazy. Yep, and the last two games. Right at the turn into February. I mean, 
23, 22 minutes for Sillinger. Like it's it's silly season. Um, it's a home matchup. The Islanders aren't a great defensive matchup, but it's also not a fearsome one. So I, if you need value, I think that's perfectly fine. Um, any interest in the Islanders side here? I mean, they did beat Chicago. It wasn't necessarily the most uh, inspiring of efforts on their part. Um, anything that you like on the Islanders front in what should be pretty considerable ownership, I would guess. Yeah. I mean, watching that game, it felt like it was just full domination when Matt Barzal was on the ice. And for some reason, they're anchoring Torvat and Barzal to Zekas. And I'm not saying that, like, they have to put Nelson there. It doesn't really matter if they want to split them up. But, like, Casey Zekas is just not it. I think that just it does enough if that sticks together to get me off of it because it really just felt like they were, I mean, it just felt like I can't even think of like, I'm trying to give a good analogy. It's just, just like this guy just does not belong on that line. And it just was very evident watching it um, as they made a ton of amazing plays and opportunities. And not only was he on the top line, but on the top power play. And, and you're just shaking your head. Like, how is this happening? <laughs> so I think I'm just not playing the Islanders. I, just, I, it's I just stupid not, stuff. I did not like, notice that. Oh my god! It was Peugeot with Zizekas on the top power. Remember point. when like, people were it's like, just like, so. Hold on, who wasn't there? Uh, uh Nelson and Palmieri. Come off for Zizekas and Peugeot. Like I don't know what to tell you. It's. <laughs> It's clowns. Okay, like, this, this I mean, is... people are going to play the island. Like they're going to play them. Oh, yeah. They look good on paper. Like I get it. But yeah. Don't do. I, I'm not. And I. I can confirm this is going to be a bad show though. I just opened up the Anaheim Calgary hockey viz page and I'm just staring at it like I don't see any of these dudes on the power play. Holy <laughs> shit, man! I, I need to go to bed. <laughs> um, yeah. This this team is. I mean. Patrick Waugh, come on, man. Like, good lord, get out of here. Um, it's it's yeah, just... Yeah, he is, he is not not it. Just another doofus that uh, him and Lamorello <laughs> should just... They, they got to fight around bold. I, I'm sorry. It's just, it is not correct. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, it, also... A good matchup. Also, Noah Dobson. Yeah. Noah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, go. Sorry, Noah Dobson played 19 minutes last game. Not, not good. Not what you want to see here. Um no. I mean, keep an eye on things if they're being projected for like the current role where not Dobson's playing 19 minutes instead of the 26 he was playing earlier in the year. Then, like, yeah, maybe there's some upside here, but come on, not just it, it is yeah. like, like, think about this for a second. Let's just think for one second. This team was like locked into a playoff spot, they're rolling, and it feels like Patrick Wall just made changes and then derailed everything, and now they can't score. And just instead of fixing it, he puts Zizekas on the top power play. It's, I mean, it truly is unbelievable. Like, you, you really can't. I, I don't understand. Like, I really don't understand. I just don't get it. Um, I'm not playing them tomorrow. Anyways. Yeah, I don't know that there's anything to understand. Is is the main problem? Um, it's just, hey, the guy played in the National Hockey League, so he must be a good coach. Uh, Mike Riley is 3300. Um, that that's yeah. probably okay. You know, it's a good matchup. He's going to get secondary power play time. He's going to play with Brock Nelson apparently. And we know Brock yeah. Nelson's like good. So um, 24 shots, 10 blocks in his last 10. Um, you can see if, if I added something for the pod um, on the YouTube, if you're watching where I can pull the top uh, shot on or shot attempt guys over the last 10 for each team. So that's kind of cool down. Uh, down here, and you can see 4.9 shot attempts for Mike Riley over the last 10. Yeah. You know, it's it's not fantastic, but for a 3,300 defenseman and a good matchup, like, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, and there's the outside shot that even gets a, a double bonus too for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, blocks that are fine. I think, so. I think, yeah, I think that's the needle of thread if you got, want to play it because you're not going to get a lot of ownership on that. I mean, this game against Chicago, they had 2.5 effective goals against the Blackhawks, and it it felt that way. I mean, it really just felt like they were getting no dangerous chances because every line has a cinder block on it. Um, I think the Nelson Palmieri angle line was probably actually not that bad. Everything else is just sort of like, what the heck am I watching? And uh, they just don't want to be exciting anymore. 
before. Like Patrick Waugh came in and was given all the best guys, all the big minutes, and they looked fun and exciting, and they were scoring goals. And they had to stop that. Now they're going to miss the playoffs. Anyways, on to good teams, two very good teams. Tampa Bay and Montreal, are you ready? Oh, Montreal, very good. Oh. Um, I'm, I'm glad you're – Tampa on the back-to-back. I, I'm just happy you're jumping aboard. Um, you know, I've, I've watched a good number of Montreal games the last few weeks, and they look, you know, they look well put together. I don't know. Um, their, their underlings are slipping a touch as of late, and, you know, it's a little goaltender driven, but man, I don't know. I, I watch this team, and I don't really see the same level of disorganization that there was early in the year. Um, so, I, yeah, I think I'm sort of in agreement with you that, like, this team is probably just good um but does you know i guess yeah. before we touch on tampa uh is there anyone on montreal like outside of the top line that stands out to you because uh like nick suzuki just went off um he didn't really bring his line mates with him but like i guess it's fine um but anyone stand out to you or depth or anything mm-hmm. like that a caulfield scored oh uh, i guess he didn't really get there 11 points. Um, no, I mean, it's, I mean, that, that line was, he scored. Yeah, I was, he, he definitely scored. I just don't really remember. Okay. Um, he had what? He had seven shot attempts, two on net, one in the back. Uh, that line, so Suzuki had uh, okay. point six expected goals, Slavkowski had point six six expected goals, and then Suzuki had point eight expected goals. So that line combined for, you know, a metric ton of expected goals against the Florida freaking Panthers. I don't really know why you look anywhere else. I mean, New York's on the top power play. I mean, they do allow him to shoot the puck there. They shouldn't, but they do. Matheson exists. He played 29 minutes. Um, he's 5,600 now, so becoming more stomachable. Has double bonus upside. Has hit back-to-back blocks. Uh, is involved. So, like, it's probably just Mike Matheson if you want to do it. It's obviously not a great matchup against Tampa. They're good. But they're going to be playing Matt Tompkins almost definitely, and they're on a back-to-back. Mm-hmm. So, I think you can yeah. find a way to do it. I, I mean, I don't think it's going to be unknown completely, but not going to be a ton. Just people aren't going to want to do it, and it's not that expensive for how it's playing. Like, Nick Suzuki is not a $5,600 player. He's almost a point per game, and he's actually shooting. Uh, Cole Caulfield, as I just mentioned, didn't really get there last slate, and maybe people are afraid because the shot numbers haven't looked good in the little recent stretch here, but it's not for a lack of trying, and that number can revert very quickly against a back-to-back team. So I have no issue at all going to the Montreal well. Um, not as interested in the Tampa side, but we'll touch on it because, uh, as you're kind of alluding to, the numbers look worse in Montreal, and they are getting bailed up by their goaltending, so that could obviously snap. It's not that expensive to play Montreal, so you could bring it back with Tampa, but what are you bringing it back with other than Kucherov? And that yeah. certainly is going to be now difficult. Yeah, um, we know that at home, Suzuki will draw the matchups, um, and, you know... <laughs> When you play the Barkov, Reinhardt, Tarasenko line, like, you know, I know there were Verhegi's out and, you know, Kachuk is sick, but like still Barkov and Reinhardt have been, you know, elite together all season long. And when you basically play them to a draw, if not a slight win, um, that is very, very impressive. And we know that this Tampa top line is abysmal defensively. Now they're, you know, they're magic offensively. So like, you know, that, that makes up for it, but um you know, it, it is sort of a tale of two teams. It's like when Kucherov is on the ice, goals happen. And when everyone else is on the ice, you know, no goals happen. Like that's just very much true at both ends of the ice. Um, so I think Montreal is in a pretty interesting spot. Why is Slavkowski 30 100 again? What, what did he do? I'm not sure. It was like yeah, uh, he was 5K and then he just kept doing good things. Uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, no, he he's good, and Cole Caulfield is maybe a tad expensive, but sixty seven hundred isn't too hard to stomach. Again, there's not a ton to spend on on this slate. Very similar to Tuesday, we'll talk about McKinnon, of course, but like, um, you know, it's not a crazy slate. I think to uh, want to spend up on like a you know Montreal one, for instance. Um, I'm not sure. Mike Matheson seems like he's doing far better than he was maybe a couple weeks ago. And I was kind of like, yeah, you know, he's just not really putting up the, the, the solid underlines you'd want to see. Um, I don't think there's anything, you know, like that Montreal does not show up anywhere on the expected fantasy point list, like not even Cole Caulfield does. So 
it's a little bit tough to like, you know, oh, all in, I'm going to spend, you know, because even if Slavkovsky is cheap, you're still paying, you know, reasonably high salaries for Caulfield, Suzuki, and Matheson. Um, but Matheson almost set five shot attempts a game last 10. If you stack Montreal, I think that's fine. I wouldn't play Matheson otherwise, though. Um, and yeah, I think for me, it's mostly new hook. Joel Armia, maybe, but again, I think it's more with Tampa. You really just want to target their top line for offense. They're, they're really solid defensively. Otherwise, um, they just don't do a lot offensively otherwise. So it's just a tale of two games. Um, Tampa, any interest in full stacking Kucherov or power play stacking or, um, you know, Victor Hedman scored tonight. Like, is there anyone besides Kucherov that stands out to you? Is like you know the obvious stacking me. I mean, yeah, I, I well, I mean, point plays with them all the time, but I mean, a it's expensive, and I, I, I mean, really, the reason to do it is because I, I think it's going to be pretty low ownership. Um, I don't know though; people just love playing against Monster. I, I really don't know. I think I'm not going to do it, and I understand why you would, but a month of ownership is going to be lower than like. I don't know. Who drop under six, six, seven percent? I don't really know why I'm doing it. So I can just move. I don't know. I I'm not gonna do it. Probably is basically the point. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so okay. let's get over to. Oh, of course, I just closed out. Um, let's just get over to the Florida Panthers heading into Ottawa. Um, Tarasenko revenge? Question mark. Um. Yeah. Well, what do you got here for the money line and whatnot? Yeah, second highest total on the slate, plus 114 for the six and a half. Um, it's a minus 155 for the Road Panthers going into Ottawa. Already, certainly without Berhage, question marks on the Chuck and Ekblad. I, I really don't know what they're meaning there. I will add that at the end of that Montreal game, I, I believe it was the last at least five, if not more minutes. Reinhardt never touched the ice again once they got down by like three. Um his minutes don't reflect that too much with 19 because they were going for it for a while. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it kind of seemed like that entire top line of the Tarasenko just exited stage left and never was seen again. So really just bark off Reinhardt and uh, Montour felt like this never came back out there. I mean, because Ekblad already got hurt and they're, you know, the trucks banged up and whatnot, but I, I guess I'm just all of this to say I'm a little bit hesitant. Um, the top power play, was Tarasenko, Reinhardt, Barkov, loose terrain in the Montour. A little bit different than expected, of course. Loose terrain in was that front. Do with that information what you wish. Reinhardt was with Barkov and Tarasenko. I don't know. It feels like kind of a mess in Florida. I get the team total is decent here. It's like, you know, a spot to bounce back after a tough loss in Montreal, but Ottawa's been playing fine. I don't really think this stands out. It's not that cheap. In general and like like I'm, i guess what i'm alluding to is it's not that cheap because you're kind of centered around that top line completely and tarasenko's a good savings at 4k but i feel like you could just one off him and be fine so it's kind of what i'm thinking here um what do you think yeah i mean we are so like you know, we've been banging the drum and the Florida underlyings are showing weakness. And now we're finally getting like, oh, wow, like, this, you know, it's Florida screwed basically is the chatter around the league. Um, so, you know, do with that what you will. I'm honestly not sure how the field reacts to things like this, you know, where like uh, the, 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 the beat writers, the media in general talking about a team like I don't know if that actually is going to lower ownership here. Um but it does make me a bit hesitant to spend way up on Florida for sure. Um, I think I'd rather take a stab at whatever this Lindell Lusterinen line is, as far as um, I think they redo their lines here. But if it's Evan Rodriguez, if you know, they maybe they even put uh, Ryan Hart back with them. Like I think that would be an interesting, uh, you know, path to go down. Um, just because you know, uh, Kachuk, even if he plays. Uh, with Nova Hagee, I believe that they would still sort of be uh, more focused on Lundell or Sarandon as a pairing, especially in a situation where they win, um, just because they're sort of their, you know, their secondary aces after Barkov uh, to shut games down. So 
I'm keeping a close eye on what actually transpires as far as, you know, uh, the lines and whatnot. But I do think Luce Ryan is pretty interesting. And he's almost a dead lock if Kachuk misses again. Um, you can see here he's been very good. He's on the value list in fantasy points per dollar, um, expected fantasy points per dollar. 2,700 if Kachuk misses, he should be power play one. Um, and yeah, that would be pretty, pretty enticing. Otherwise, in Ottawa, I mean, Brady Kachuk, 8,000? Like, is is this team all of a sudden a little bit sneaky? I, I don't know. Like, Florida, you know, they, they've been getting beaten up. Uh, Ottawa, or I think Kachuk put up six or seven shots against Minnesota the other night. So this might be a spot for Brady. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I definitely keep an eye on the Ottawa lines tomorrow. They did switch it to Batherson with Greek, um, and the Chuck later in the game uh, didn't really oh, help shit. all that much. I, I mean, it, yeah. So I, I just keep an eye on that. Uh, the power play was Chicker and Ant. Wait, what? Mm-hmm. At, at Cliffy's going to go what? absolutely nuts if that's true on the uh, Stochastic Show. He loves Ridley Greek. I mean, I don't know if it's going to stick or not because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they did. I think I, I, but all three goals came against Babbitton and the Chuck at five on five. Greed was out there for one of them, and I have to look at the shifts. I, and I believe it was the last one. I was watching a good amount of that game, and I noticed it, and I double checked, and I was pretty sure that Greed. I don't know. This is probably great content. Me trying to figure it out, but I'm pretty sure it was Greed that got out there again with Brady and ben. yeah, it was later in the game. Yep, and it, it stuck throughout the rest. So the whole third period, basically. Um, to keep an eye on it for sure. Not yeah. I, all of this to say is like that is the best line. It, it is the line that gave up all three five on five goals against. I'm not saying that's going to happen again because, as you can probably imagine, they got matched up with. Uh, oh wait, four. <laughs> the fourth line scored two goals for Minnesota. Never mind. I don't know. I, I honestly like. I get everything you're saying. I'm not going to do it. I just am going to stick to I'm not playing against Florida, uh, even if it kills me. Um, I think this is just going to be kind of a garbage game. And if it, if Batherson is the reason. I, I you, you can maybe give it a look, but the, the volume is yeah. great there. So you're really, you know, you're having to stack him at me. And so I don't know. Yeah, I, we, I've already tried to talk have, myself all this game fairly. We have one of the most narrow funnels in the league right now in Ottawa. Um, Brady, Chikrin, and Batherson, all north of five shot attempts a game over the last 10. The next guy after that, I mean, I don't even know if Hamannick's mm-hmm. playing. Um, the, the DK sheet doesn't yeah. filter out guys who are not playing for the pod. I'll work on that at some point. But uh, Jake Sanderson is the next guy in line at 3.7 shot attempts. So, like, Claude Giroux, Tim Stutzla, like, they're just nowhere to be found. They're yeah. not shooting. Um, Pinto as well. So, like, I think Kachuk and Chikrin make for a great mini stack. Um, that yeah. makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so, that's sort of the, the main interest I have in this game. But I certainly am keeping an eye out on lines for for both sides, honestly, um, to see if there's anything we can exploit. Uh, okay, let's move from there over into Pittsburgh at Washington. For Washington, Tom Wilson should return. So the top line, uh, Maroshnichenko experiment, seems like it will end. Um, who was McMichael still centering Ovi, or did we finally get Strom back? Yep. It, it, well, I mean, during yeah. the did they wait, did they practice today? That's a good question because I actually don't think uh, I ever they looked. Did okay, they definitely. Okay. Well, did. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up. That's one team I okay, pulled was, up, I guess. Because it I, was it was just sorry, it was just an optional, so we don't actually know what the lines are. We just saw that Tom Wilson will return, and that I believe Coach okay. said he will go on to Ovi's wing. Um. Yeah. In any case, again, not, I mean, not worth the, trying to find the power it. play. The power play unit that scored and got the majority of the run was Ovi, Strom, Carlson, LaPierre, and Scarbosa. They lost six to two. Yep. Everything could go yep. out the window. I mean, let's, yeah. So I, 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 I all the best players are still the best players. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not yeah. a big deal. Yeah, I think it's Tom Wilson and Ovi. Um, well, I mean, Strom and Ovi, and then I think Tom Wilson yep. is pretty safe there, and obviously John Carlson. Um, 
I mean, Ovi's just shooting an absolute metric ton, 8.7 shot attempts over the last 10. Like, this dude is not going away anytime soon. Uh, that mark is identical to Kale McCarr, you know, higher than Nathan McKinnon, identical to Phil Forsberg. Like, these dudes we talk about as, like, pure crushers. Like, yeah, Ovi's not getting a ton of expected goals, and you can argue, okay, he's old, he's not as good as he was, but, like, he's still beating his expected goals numbers. Like, he's Alex Ovechkin. Like, you know, and so it does not feel like that bad of a matchup. I know they're pretty low on the, the expected goals index and Pittsburgh does have a couple of inspiring efforts uh, to sort of, I don't know, the dead cat bounce in Pittsburgh, but man, <laughs> Ovi at 6,800 against Sidney Crosby feels pretty good to me. So um, I'm strongly considering it. Um, and yeah, I would probably just try and play Dylan Strom with Ovi. I, I still don't, really know why uh why the price is sub 5k he just continues yeah. to do the thing where he gets fantasy points and uh yeah th that's my interest in this game yeah 100 i mean i'm i'm all over honestly i could be very easily convinced on both sides of the coin here i think this is probably my favorite game of the night for uh game stack in general uh washington because we know where it's coming from entirely at this point i it's just like like, watch that power play back, that goal, and it was just, you know, Strom, OV Carlson. Strom ends up burying it. But, like, Scarposa and LaPierre are just pylons out there. And, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying Tom Wilson's certainly not worse than them if he gets back in the mix. Uh, I think he'll be better, but, like, he's not going to be a guy that they're moving the puck through. It's just so obvious where to go. And where the, the peak comes from is OV on the power play. So, all in on that. I think that Pittsburgh really does have two lines worth consideration. The power play that they ran, and of course they're going to keep, they, you know, this one six to three was bunting rust, Carlson, Malkin and Crosby, which means that you have kind of two options here, Crosby, rust, bunting and Malkin. I mean, the Malkin line was the one you would have wanted last late. It definitely makes things fit a lot easier. I have no problem with it. Um, you know, the upside obviously doesn't feel as good, but it's pretty cheap to play a bunting uh, Malkin situation. So there's options here. And this game, I mean, Pittsburgh wins this game. They are not entirely out of this entire race yet. Um, I guess my problem with playing the Crosby line is, am I really clicking on Brian Rust more expensive than Alexander Ovechkin? I get you could play both of them. I don't know. Um, it gets, it, it's tricky. Uh, but yeah, Eric Carlson back on the top power play. We Everyone thought it'd be Latang. He scored, but it was not really a... Uh, Eric Carlson, you know, sniper. He bounced off like three guys and went in. No one's really shooting at a metric ton rate in Pittsburgh, which is kind of why, again, I'm okay with saying who really cares. Like, the goals will be the goals. I, I might just go Malkin, Bunting, yeah. um, find Q power by one. Yeah. I, mean, um, shooting, I guess. But. The, the the Carlson, yeah, I was I was like, I saw a 7.1 shot shooting. attempts yeah. number, but yeah, shooting, shooting. yeah it's whatever it's 5,800 it's not 5k like it was and I, and I do feel like that matters I do feel like Pittsburgh will get some ownership on the road in Washington against the Caps team that I still respect defensively I know Buffalo put up a fucking touchdown on them and it made me very sad but like um well it made me very sad to lose it's gonna make me very uh it's gonna make me laugh very hard when they miss the playoffs by like three points and they're like oh my god if they just hadn't lost to you know whoever auto or something um then i'll be very fun but um you know I, I don't really see a reason to bite into a ton of ownership here on pittsburgh like maybe crosby malkin is what i would want to do like i would just want to do something that's just not bland line stacking because that just feels like you're eating into a pretty poor five on five matchup honestly um and you know there's no defenseman to really offset the expensive costs now of, of Sid and friends. So, um, yeah. So I think we've talked enough about that game. Next up, yeah. we do have Colorado oh, the next heading into the, Minnesota. Yeah. What do you got? What you got? This game will be fast. I, I mean, it's, I'm like, you're just like, it's a six over under minus 122 on the over minus 170 for the road avalanche. First and foremost, we don't know on Valerie Dardushkin yet. It sounds like he won't be back till Friday. He had a full skate. It seemed like he was good to go. We're going to keep an eye on it. Uh, obviously, Hartman's still out. I mean, there's just no way, in my opinion at least, that I'm playing either of these top lines. And if I'm not playing either of these top lines at these prices in this matchup, what am I really doing? You know, like the only other option is going with like Middlestead 
you don't have to do that in DFS. No one's going to make you on this big of a slate. Like on a small slate, sure, I get it. Um, he was on the top power play pretty much in full last game. I'm not doing it here. So, yeah, I think I'm completely out in this game entirely. Um, and if you want to play McKinnon as a one-off, I think that's probably the way to do it at 52. Or that, oh, my God, 52. At 10,200. Um, just, just because he is truly doing everything he can to win an MVP. Uh, I like just one off him if you want, but I don't even think you need to stack around him all that much. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I think at the end of the day, there's almost a 0% chance I stack into this game. Um, I don't like it. Yeah. I'll need to, uh, I'll need to check, but I mean, 10 or sorry, uh, 7.9 shot attempts in his last 10 honestly feels like a low water mark for McKinnon. Like he's been so good yeah. that that, feels like a low number for him um so i don't know if that like you know like it's clear that he still has the shot bonus in his arsenal but i'm not sure that that's like a dead guarantee especially if minnesota just rolls over and plays dead um and they've been pretty solid defensively you know uh that even the goaltending has held up for them so i'm a little nervous about playing into mckinnon here like you know, there's not a ton to spend salary on, so by all means, if you want to one off him, that's probably pretty good. I think I'd almost rather one off David Pasternak though, just because I feel like you get a decent ownership discount and you can play some of these uh LA guys that we'll get to without feeling you know quite as 2v2, 3v3 ish. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, I don't know, like in the Minnesota one, like come on, like they're, they're still a billion dollars, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, he's, we, we he's about gonna it. draw Eric Sinek. Yes, right. I mean, that's probably the plan. I, I mean, I'm not saying you have to be petrified of Eric Sinek after missing some time, but he's always been a very sound defensive uh center that can match up against anyone. So, I, I mean, again, I'm, I'm you're gonna if, if you turn over the cards that I play Colorado, Minnesota, send help to Buffalo because I'm clearly <laughs> not in control of, at the wheel. Um, uh, and, and again, I, I'm not even saying it's truly important to play Colorado. I think that that's the option here. It's not Minnesota. Um, and Kale McCarr has been shooting a ton. Of, like, like very recent, the past couple games, McCarr is shooting every puck at the net. Uh, I'm not doing it here. It's not for me. Not me, not now. What the hell is Sean Walker doing? Getting just... Uh, He's annoying. Uh, okay. If, I don't know if Colorado yeah, scored just, and it's not the top line, it's just Sean Walker. I don't know why. <laughs> just is. Yeah. Just, oh, okay. Sean Walker scored again. Very cool. Uh, yeah, next game if you're ready. I am ready. Now look at that. Josh Manson is the one who shows up on the expected fantasy point list and not Sean Walker. Okay. I don't I don't know. I I, I might spend some more time on well, Colorado because, tomorrow because they're playing really well. Like it's not like a crazy, you know, yeah, to no, say. For sure. Um but it's is Manson or something weird. One. Yes, that that's Manson it. played last game. Um, unless... Manson's. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, Manson's playing. I, okay. Take a look. All take right. Look. I'm just. I'm, I'm looking. Okay. Whatever. Just just. Colorado tomorrow. No one's playing Mark. Manson. <laughs> but if you play McKinnon and McCarr, you need to play I someone. Had, I had a, I right. had a segue. I, I had a segue. Did you drive okay, it off a cliff? Segue now. Okay. No, I. That did happen though. Uh, to the guy. Well, that, we're not going to get into the segue story. Okay, it doesn't matter. No one cares. Okay, so if you like to play, if you want to play the game called "What Hurt Matt the Most Over the Past Two Main Slates," you would be playing the game of Edmonton failing against St. Louis and Nashville failing against Boston. That would be the game you're playing today. And now you have the option to put them both together. Nashville at home against St. Louis. And I freaking want to play Nashville. So I want you to talk me out of it. As the person that's been hurt the most. Now, before you get into that, it is a six over under minus 105, minus 192 for the Predators in a must win game for the Blues. I mean, this is like, this is the game they have to have. And I know it's really not even Nashville all that much that they're chasing. It's more LA, but LA is going to beat the Sharks. We're going to get to that later. So, are you going to talk me in or are you going to be out of national? So I'm going to talk you into Ryan O'Reilly paired with these dudes because you know if Nashville's winning, 
like four to one, they're pulling the fucking goalie. Like, you know, they're yeah. going to go all out to, you know, this is going to be game seven of the playoffs for the Blues. So, yeah. Um, I don't think you have to play Yossi Forsberg. You know, there is going to be significant ownership that comes with them. But, uh, yeah, they remain fantastic plays. I'm keeping a very close eye on the Nashville blue line because, like, Spencer Stastny is playing and he sucks. Yeah. And uh, he was he was on the ice with the empty net, like, last game. And it's like, you really can't find room in your lineup for Tyson Berry without Stastny. And whenever Barry plays, he's good. He should be on the power play when he plays, um, especially after this loss. So I'm keeping a very close eye on that because um, Barry will make a lot of sense if he's in the lineup. And if he's not, Forsberg, Yossi, yeah, they're fine, but I would definitely play Ryan O'Reilly with them for the empty net potential. And, of course, Gus Nyquist also could get there via the empty net. And it's just additional upside for um, a team that you really don't need to squint to see why they're in a great matchup. Uh, the Blues, you know, they kind of stink. And Nashville, despite their blip against Boston, um, have been pretty dominant. And they're at home and, you know, they're incentivized here and everything else. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'm talking out of Nashville by any stretch. But I'm certainly not going to try and talk you into like a Cody Glass or something. Because coming off of that last game, I, I truly do think that any bit of a struggle, like any of these guys could get benched. And so I'd rather just pay up for Forsberg and Yossi and find value elsewhere on the slate. Yeah, I mean, I am a brunette believer. I think he's a good coach that end of that game. Again, it's kind of hard because it's like, who is he going to put out there? They really only had one line that was putting up a fight against Boston. And that line was out there for 22 minutes already. And, and uh, you know, O'Reilly... Mike Vist and Forsberg, when that line was out there, they were in the offensive zone, taking care of business. They just couldn't freaking score. Um, there's just no need to look at anyone else. And they the collapse at the end of the game is because as soon as those guys had to leave to take one second to drink a sip of water, they got destroyed, and therefore when there's no goalie, that's a goal against. Yeah, automatic. Um, very frustrating uh, game to watch. It seemed, again, like that line was just cooking and they just could not find the answer key to uh, Linus Olmark. Luckily for them, they do not play Linus Olmark. It's probably going to be Jordan Bennington coming off of the game of of, his, of the season for him, you know, a game against Edmonton. Like he could be a situation where people might, and I hope, fade Nashville because they're coming into this very important game against the goalie that just did it against Edmonton. I'm not going to be afraid of Jordan Bennington. I never have been afraid of Jordan Bennington. And yeah, not going to start now. Um, so yeah. great game. If Definitely we... a good one to watch. Is there any thoughts on yeah. the other side? No, well, just one more thing on Nashville. Uh, the very last power play they had and the empty net, it was the main four that we know, Nashville and then Yossi. I mentioned the Stastny on the stupid empty net situation six on five but on the power play the last one they had was evangelista in place of glass and you know if the projection sites miss this if they have glass projected there and you know whatever else um just just stay tuned we're actually we have been getting good power play information from nashville for some reason yeah. in morning skates so maybe it's because people actually care about them now because they're winning um so we might get this news but just keep yeah. an eye out for it Oh uh, yeah, St. Louis. It just it has it's gotta be very. It's gotta be very. Like I don't understand. That's the only time the power play looks good. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, go on the last St. Louis. Yeah, no, I, I don't really see anything on St. Louis that stands out. I, I think Nashville's better defensively than they are offensively, especially with their depth pieces. Um I I liked what I saw out of Torepchenko last game. He's 2500, second power play um he's sort of trusted i don't know he he certainly has a lot of the coach speak mentality they're like the qualities that you like to see from like your cheap punt shit um so you know if he gets a point obviously you're thrilled but 2500 i think Torpchenko is really the only guy on st louis that i'm considering and that's just because he has a newfound role you know on that second line that i don't believe they swap up and that he earned a power play role as well with the uh second unit so yeah, I think uh, um, that's all I have. You know, the, the, yeah, the very recent run of Kairos looked good. Back-to-back -back shot bonuses, playing with Herbchenko and Bustnevich. I think no matter what, though, if I'm clicking on a St. Louis Blue, it is going to be tethered to Tory Krug at 4,600. This I'm... last game, and I believe again, I mean, they played four defensemen. And I don't think that's going to change. And if you're giving me 28 minutes of Tory Krug, I'm at least going to consider it. He does have double bonus upside. 
you know, the, the, the goal department may be more lacking than other defensemen with his, the, his shot not being maybe the best in the world. But I do think you're looking at a guy that could definitely meet value at 4,600, especially if you're already saying that another guy in St. Louis is winning on this slate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Shen and Hayes are paired up. They've been pretty good value-wise, but I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure why you'd play yeah. them on the road here, given some of the other spots we've touched on with better teams. And yeah, power play was, outside, power play like, was back, yeah, back Florida to line normal. And whatnot. Yeah, it was Thomas, Kairou, Pusnevich, Neighbors, yeah. Krug, by the way. Uh, we'll keep okay. an eye on it, but that's expected. Final two? Yes. Um, yep, we had yes, the... It was Calgary Lane. and Winnipeg. Yeah. Six over under, minus 102, and a minus 205 on the Winnipeg Jets at home. Uh, Nino Niederreiter out week to week, hopefully back for the playoffs. And return is out to Foley at 5K. He was sick. He should be back. Um, yeah, I don't know. This game is uh, – I don't know. I, I feel like I equally like and hate – Like I think this game could be one-to-one – going into overtime and it could be six to six. Like, I really don't know. Um, the flames are doing the things I wanted them to do. And I guess maybe some coaches were right. Like defensively, they just became a nightmare. Um, maybe you can't put actually they gave up five on one point and expect the goals. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mark from did not have a banner night for himself there. Uh, I, I think I end up saving this one, but. You go. Yeah, no, I'm just looking at this game and saying, oh, 8,400 Connor Hellebuck, like 35% owned. Like, I, I kind of went in on that action. Um, not not really a ton of thought otherwise. Uh, like, how did you celebrate Cold Perfidi Night the other day? I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know why I'm saying Perfidi. Cold Perfetti, yeah, almost certainly. Yeah. I, that's freaking the stochastic show just in, in my brain. Um, but yeah, he's 3K, probably sticks on that line. Sorry, 3,100 uh, with uh, what? Sh- fucking hell. Uh, was it Monahan and Sh- Connor? That's what they went with. And then went to Foley. Line. I retweeted the line. They ran lines today and I retweeted them. And. Okay. Uh, it was Ehlers, Shrapley, Velarde, Connor. Uh, missing was Monahan and Perfetti. And then Tafoli was Gustafson, yep. Appleton. And I believe Lowry and yep. Gustafson. Um, so yeah. a little okay. bit messy there. Yeah, no. Um, that does make it, you know, kind of interesting for like for fantasy purposes, though. I, I don't know. Yeah. Because um, yeah. at least, at least if winnipeg is pretty chalky at home in a good spot like you kind of do need to make a decision between three equally valid lines um and unlike you know some other spots i genuinely do feel like this team is actually pretty good at five on five like offensively they have the the skill to sort of you know rise above um so you can chase the perfetti points i'm not sure that that's my favorite option here I'm still sort of beholden to Ellers, Velarde, Shifley. That's going to run you 16,000 for two guys on the top power play and Nick Ellers, who we know can get there in almost any circumstance. You're taking a little bit of a leap of faith. Yeah. Yeah. And you're taking a little bit of a leap of faith on Velarde, sort of keeping that role and especially holding it all game with the Foley back on the power play. Um, But I still think that's a really good bet to make. And, you know, is paying 16k instead of uh you know chasing the perfetti points that is going to run you about 16k as well um just maybe maybe sets you up for a bit of uh you know positive leverage over the field that sees Kyle Connor and goes yep I want that guy yeah I'm just reading through right now but yeah it does yep uh to fully will slide in with Lowry I'm just double checking they, they they did actually ask about the lineup and that is all going to stick, as they said. So, yeah, um, I guess I personally lean Monahan, Connor, Morrissey, myself. But if you're doing that, you might as well throw in Cole Perfetti at 3,100. Yeah. So, yeah, this is uh, this is interesting. I, I, this is more interesting than I thought. And I do agree that it's probably only on the uh, the Winnipeg side of the, the house. I, I just 
I don't have a lot of interest in sacking the Flames. Uh, I mean, the Kuzmenko line yeah. giveth and taketh like, away, scored twice, three against. They're going to be a lot of fun. I just hope I find that matchup because I think they'll have success if I can find it. It's just you're kind of guessing. I mean, how do we know for sure? All of these lines are yeah. brand new. So, yeah. I th- I think the only controls the matchup. So. Okay. I think uh... – I think Uyghur is very much in play. I mean, he's just been on an absolute tear, um, doing everything at all ends of the ice. He's just in uh, peak Mackenzie Uyghur mode, where he's just motoring up and down the ice. Um, you know, looks like looks like he's having a fun time, unlike every single other Calgary Flame uh, that just looks like they are yeah. ten minutes late to a tea time. Like it's the second they step on the ice, they're just like, "Fuck!" Like I do not want to be here right now. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm pretty out on everything else, um, other than Uyghur. So final game, LA sure. at San Jose, um, you know, first things first, obviously San Jose, you really only ever considering their top line, uh, Zetterlin's been pretty quality, you know, no, no harm in going that way. Uh, they're pretty cheap, but obviously, you know, not the best matchup in the world. Um, anything on San Jose before we talk about LA? The closings out here. I mean, like I'll just take a look at the sports book. It's a six over under shading towards that under, and it's a minus three fifty five for LA. Uh, I, I mean, it really is giving them an incredibly low total for the sports books. I just have to agree, and I understand that it's probably pretty correlated through the Costin Brandlin Sutherland line. I mean, I'm, I'm not going there myself. I just don't think it's necessary on this slate where, like, there's so much good mid-tier options. I just don't think you need to spread yourself that thin. And if you are, okay. it's because you probably play Colorado, which I said I'm not doing. So, yeah, no, no, no worries for me. I'm not doing it. Okay. Um, so, L.A. is going to be playing there on a back-to-back. Um, we are actually recording this a bit later than usual. Um, and we did get confirmation yeah. that there's no fill to no. I just want to look at the lines to uh, make sure we have the absolute latest. Um, so they are going 11-7 yeah, seven on. I don't know what you were trying to say there, but uh, we're going 11-7. and seven. I, We have my field. I, I said they can't be. Well, thank you, because I'm literally reading them. Context clues. Uh, Moore, Dubois, Arvidsson, Fiala, Lizotte, Lewis. Um, if this... Thank you for disappearing, for sliding down the screen. Um, if this holds, we could see Kevin Fiala project to be third line. Like, you know, oh, power play one. He probably still projects well and stocky chalk anyway, but maybe he's a bit lower than he should be given the, the allotment with, oh, yeah, or the alignment with Lazat and Lewis. Like, yeah, okay. Um, I think that, you know, Fiala is going to double shift of Kopitar Kempi. He's going to double shift of Dubois. Like it's, it's going to be very clearly one of those situations. Now there's no guarantee that 11 seven holds through to Thursday. And that's something you got to consider. Um, but that really just means, you know, stack whoever you want on the Kings. Be mindful if they lose that we could see dramatic uh, changes and that if they win convincingly, we probably see a similar uh, lineup, which means, you know, Dubois definitely in a better role than he has been for most of his Kings tenure um, and probably is a good play as a result on the value end of things. Anything you want to say on the LA Kings now that you've confirmed that their lines are posted? Okay, yeah, we're obviously on a delay tonight. It hasn't been going great. I'm now reporting live from the floor. Um, <laughs> I thought you didn't have them, so I was trying to help you, and clearly it was too delayed because you're like, there's no to know. And that was the first tweet, and then the lines came right after. I was like, no, the lines are there too, you idiot. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's very obvious that, uh, well, first off, well, well, let's keep an eye on the know. Let's make sure. The top power play is probably going to continue to be Kempe, Arvidsson, uh, Kopitar, Fiala, and Dowdy. So yeah. I'm personally, like, I think if you're playing LA, I'm getting weird with it, just doing the Kempe, Arvidsson. Um, Okay. God, I don't know. I, I probably would throw a third in. I just say that they just explode on the slate. Um, I guess the power play correlation there's a little odd because Arvidsson doesn't really play. He plays the Jeff Skinner role from the past. I don't know, like that front D moving the puck. He controls it from behind the net a bit. Uh, maybe you could get a Kempe to Arvidsson hit goal or something, but 
I mean, those are the guys that are driving the bus, but I mean, I might just play camping, honestly. Yeah, uh, 6,500 is certainly a you know, it's so for true. That. Um, so I'm not gonna tell you this is a bad spot by any means. <laughs> um, you just kind of gotta just pick a few, I think, and go with it. I don't know that a you know a six stack gets there on this slate, but um, I'm sort of partial to pure Luke Dubois. If he, if he plays 19 minutes in an 11-7 setup against the Sharks, I think he gets there in a pretty big way. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that may be Dubois with Kempi and Fiala just saying, you know, the, the cross lines, you're getting their best players, yada, yada. Why not? Um, why do you hate Arvidsson? Like, what is wrong with him? I don't know. He's just expensive. Like, you... yeah, uh, he's just, he's just not, he's just not one of my dudes, I guess. Like, he's you know. clearly one of mine. Um, okay. That's yeah, fine. I know. Let's... We know. Top stacks, guaranteed goals from the floor. This is where I actually pick the good ones. I just have been too high up in the elevation. Um, yeah, in exactly. The past. So I, I feel like I, every slate, I don't hide it at all. Like I truly, like I try to, like I feel like when I do the stacks, I, I sometimes give a bit of chalk, but I never hide how I feel about each game, each, each slate. Um, so I don't think it's going to come as much of a surprise uh, either of mine. So I'm going to let you go first, just in case you had one that you were, a little bit keener on that I might steal. Uh, I will go Brady, Batherson, and Chikram. Okay. I was not going to do that. So I think no matter what happens tomorrow, I will end up having that very expensive, somewhat chalky Nashville situation. Um, Yossi with Forsberg for sure. And the third guy in, as you mentioned, I mean, you could go all the way with Nyquist and O'Reilly. I have no problem with that because to pay off that those price tags on Yossi and Forsberg, you really need an absolute heat vest. Um, so it might be all the way, but let's keep an eye on it. You know, there's Tyson Berry's back and maybe going to play with Yossi at five on five in the power play. Then I could just go with those three as well. Uh, so let's just say all of the national one. Okay. Uh, certainly, certainly don't mind that. I will go uh, with the the Winnipeg, uh, Shifley, Bellardi, and Nick Ellers. Um, yes, Never Ellers' season is coming to an end for one night. Um, dude's been playing well. I, I do actually trust that Shifley and Bellardi play well together. And, you know, let's just be real. Is Kyle Connor that different than Nick Ellers from a driving play standpoint? I'm not sure. And there's a 2,000 price difference uh, for the you know, for the enhanced correlation of getting Ellers and for the, uh, you know, losing the power play that Connor brings to the table, of course. So um, I like that. Maybe it's a little bit different off of the Connor Monaghan uh, Perfetti point chasing. And uh, I think, you know, it's, it's a great matchup against Calgary. Who's who's going to argue that? So uh, there's my two stacks. What else you got? Uh, OV, Strom, and Wilson, which won't fit exactly. So... I will have to make some adjustments based on okay. the national power play, probably, but we'll, we'll keep it in mind. I mean, you know, for now, that those are going to be the two, but even if I put like Terra off, I'm just out of uh, finishing that lineup off with two punts, but those will be the two I go with here. All right. Uh, do you want to do off. guaranteed goals? Yeah, what if, okay, my phone's on the floor with me. There it is. Uh, okay, let me pull it up. Yeah, last night I think we were two for two for four again. Yeah, Paterka. Oh yeah, but, but for Hagee didn't count because he was out. So I ended up switching uh, to not I, to Spanko. It's uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we 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 were it was the same for two for four because I bet two for four. Um, you're right. I should probably go first. Uh, I'll yeah. Did you wait? You didn't say Kempe, right? What did you say? No. I did not. No. Yeah, I'll go Kempe. Okay. Um, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be a little dangerous. I'm going to live in a very similar price range to you, but I'm going to go Cole Caulfield um, ah. against Tampa. So that leaves you 4,500. That leaves me 4,300. Uh, what would you like for your second? I wrote Coke Caulfield. <laughs> Wait, how much did I have? I'm sorry. I was still laughing at myself. 4,500 is what you have. Uh, Forty-five. Uh, Tarasenko, revenge. Okay. 
Um, that that does make a lot of sense. I will take Cole Sillinger uh, with Ooh. the with the, uh, enhanced role that he has. Um, yeah, that's cold. Just... That's cold and cold. Holy shit! You're right. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, it is I, four four. I don't. That's honestly probably like the cylinder thing. I really do like. I think he actually has a, a pretty good NHL shot, and it's very underrated. Yeah, uh, the run is good, and he's he might actually be like Marchenko is a better probably pound for pound shooter. Yeah. But like that offensive creativity there, I think is actually been, like going to be overlooked on this slate uh, yes. because of power like correlation not existing. Yeah, and certainly at center, I feel much worse about the mid tier centers than. Uh, the mid-tier wings, which sort of uh, pushes me away from Marchenko and into Cylinder. Like, if I'm choosing a one-off, which is sort of how I use my guaranteed goal uh, choices. Anyway, um, so that'll do it. I mean, uh, not really much else to cover, so let's get on out of here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Fake Moods. DJ's at DJ Andrews Mitchell 94 if he ever gets off that floor. Um, you also can follow the YouTube uh, not only with his podcast on there, but also some uh, live streams when he decides to do degenerate gambling or other. What other after, after this? I'm doing one after this. Hell yeah. Well, I'm last night a, when you're listening, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do a, yeah. Uh, I'm going to give a quick encapsulation of sort of a very short history of the TV NHL situation and why I'm frustrated still. And I'm going to apologize as well. Okay. Well, I, I look forward to it. Um, let's, yeah, well, let's end the show there. Uh, that That's, by the way, it's DJ Mitchell on YouTube. I don't even know how the app works on YouTube. Is there an underscore in there or no? Anyway, links is. in the description. Links in the podcast yes, description as well. So. Uh, easy to find if you want to. And the podcast is at Morning Skate Pod over on Twitter. DM one of us if you want to get on the Discord. And if you are in MSP Madness, please do join the uh, the nine-man contest I will send out for Thursday Slate. Don't forget to join it. All right. Thank you all for listening. From Doug, from DJ, from myself. Have a good slate, everybody. And we will see you.